When I was a young boy, I lived in a unique town. Desmond, British Columbia. It was a small village resting atop a large cliff in the mountains. Most of the residents were originally climate scientists and astronomers, scaling the peak at a chance to get closer to the edge of our atmosphere, and with them came needs. See, the town was a small, but bustling community of engineers, construction workers, grocery store clerks, and all the other things a town needs to survive and thrive. It was a healthy little settlement, and for a while things were wonderful, but that was until the ground shook for the first time. You see, being on a mountain is easy, but staying there is not. The ground shifts and moves, slowly at first, but every now and again the tension will build up, and several million tons of rock will shake the foundation of your life and ruin everything you've built. My friends died in that earthquake, and so did their friends, and little by little our bustling community dwindled, people slowly leaving it all behind and forgetting that we ever existed. What most people don't know, however, is that the earthquakes are not what killed Desmond. No, that title belonged to Ballister Cave. That stark hole in the ground rested at the edge of a cliff. A several story dropped down, and at the end, a pile of bodies, all facing the entrance of what would soon be known as Ballister. The cliff got higher with every earthquake, and with the ever increasing height, the pile grew with it. Slowly the mouth of the cave opened, and it swallowed all of our lives. The first person to throw themselves off of that cliff was a small boy. He was a nice child, easy to talk with and very polite, but he was weakened by complications from birth. Lika, or as his friends used to call him, Leek, was always a bit less active than the other kids. He was sick more often, spent less time playing games or enjoying sports, and spent a lot of his life in the warmth of his own home with his two parents, and although they loved him dearly, they could tell he would never be normal. That's why the town scratched it off as a medical condition when he began talking of a wonderful smell coming from a cave at the bottom of the cliff. He would go on for hours about that smell. About how it made you feel stronger than you ever were. How it could change the way the world looked and that once you smelled it you would finally understand the beauty of the earth. These drownings of promise would go until you asked him to stop, and then he would sheepishly hush himself, as though he couldn't share the real beauty with you, not until you smelled it yourself. Even as the days went on you could tell, Lika was always thinking of the smell, and as it overwhelmed his thoughts, he could focus on nothing else. Everyone was terrified the morning they found the footprints leading to the cliff, and the splattered red stain at the bottom of it. If you got out your binoculars and looked closely, you could see a frail arm reaching towards the entrance of the cave. All he ever wanted was to reach the source of that smell, and it cost him his life. Knowing Lika, though, he didn't care about the consequences of his hunt. He couldn't. The smell was too possessing. Life continued in Desmond until people forgot about Lika and what happened to that poor boy. His parents moved away seeking a more quiet life in the States, and slowly everything returned to normal. That was until the next quake, at least. With every shake of the earth, more people became encapsulated with the smell that emanated from Ballister Cave. At first, it was those who lived closest to the cliff, but slowly, and with each tremor, more people could speak of nothing but the smell. How could they? It smells so good. They would drone for hours, until eventually the mystery became so enticing that they would join Lika at the bottom of the ever-enlarging drop, each of them facing that glorious smell that infected their minds and took over their bodies, each of them reaching for the cave, and each of them dying without ever going inside. As the mouth of the cave grew, and as more people were possessed by that scent, a mission was launched to go to the entrance of the cave and close it off. The original plan was to use large wooden boards and seal the edges with a mixture of snow and caulk, but all who went to close the cave got too excited. Many of them would cut their repelling lines trying to get to the opening faster. Others, who deemed it more safe to walk a steep path next to the cliff would get irritable, until eventually they too jumped down what was left of the edge, all reaching for the mouth. All reaching for that enticing smell. That wonderful hole in the ground. Even now I still think of that smell. Oh, how I long to find its source. The ones who did make it to the bottom of the cliff wouldn't get very far in their efforts. 
the strong-willed would place a board or two down before dropping their supplies and entering the mouth of the cave, slowly feeding the earth and forgetting their families, friends, and the whole of Desmond and search for the source of that smell. That's how it got its name, Ballister. If you looked at the entrance of the cave, you could still see their boards sticking out of the ground like a line of balusters, marking the entrance of the cave. I think they look like jagged teeth, waiting to chew up and swallow anyone who gets too close. I still wish I knew what the smell came from. Nobody who entered ever returned. Most believe they died down there, freezing to death or starving, but some believed they were still alive. Some would even talk of how they found the source of the smell and were feasting on it right now. The latter wouldn't last much longer before throwing themselves off the edge of the cliff in search of the source. Eventually, the population of Desmond dwindled until everyone was dead, reaching for the hole in the ground, moving away in search for a safer life, or inside, feasting on whatever fruit they found. I'm all that's left of Desmond, British Columbia. You won't be able to find our town on any maps, nor satellite images. The only trace of Desmond, and in turn, Ballister Cave, is me, and I'm going to find out what's inside.